You're probably watching this video because you're new to Final Fantasy XIV and you have one big burning question. What job should you main? FF14 is a game I've been playing for tens of thousands of hours. I love it, it was my first MMO, and to this day my favourite game in the world. I've played every job in the game to max level, in Endgame Savage and Ultimate Raids and more, and today I'll break down how all 19 jobs gameplay styles plays, their role in the party, and how you want to prioritise learning them. As a little note, in the run up to Dawn Trail I'll be releasing levelling and endgame guides for every single job, so if you're a new Xbox player and you're looking to play FF14 and get into endgame, I would absolutely love it if you subscribed. One thing that's great about Final Fantasy XIV is that you can level gear and play every job on one single character. There's still a use for alt, but there's no requirement to have them to fully experience the game. You can do your roulettes on Paladin, then job change to Ninja and hop into an extreme trial with your friends, and then you can go raid on Scholar. It's totally doable, and if anything it's normal. The armory system makes leveling secondary jobs much faster. So if multiple jobs speak to you, don't worry too much. My actual recommendation is just to start on the job that you think looks the coolest, and to ignore everything else. And if you want to do that, this video will be a good showcase as well. Every job is both usable and good in even the most difficult content. Without further ado, let's begin with tanks. Tanks hold aggro from the enemies away from the rest of the party, taking the majority of the damage in encounters. They use their defensive cooldowns to soak heavy hits, and their party mitigation to protect their friends. In FF14, tanks also do a lot of damage and have a high burst, with some tanks being able to rival DPS players in their peak heavy hits. There are currently four tanks in the game, and in endgame full party content you'll usually have two of them in a party. All tanks share gear, aside from their weapon. Paladin is the shield that guards the party, wielding a sword and shield and valuing honour and obligation over all. You obtain this job from leveling Gladiator, the starting tank class from Uldar to level 30, and completing your class quests. Paladin utilises a combination of close combat physical and long range magical attacks to fight, and houses a lot of defensive utility like the ability Cover, which allows the Paladin to literally take damage for a chosen party member, or Clemency, that enables them to heal a target. Paladin's pinnacle ability comes in the form of its powerful Confitia combo, where they summon ethereal swords in a multi-hit barrage. Their Limit Break 3 is Last Bastion, reducing damage taken by the party by 80% for 8 seconds. Paladin's core rotation revolves around buffing your big hits with Fight or Flight, and using your heavy hitting Confitia combo within that buff. After doing your standard 3 hit damage in sequence, you obtain a buff, strengthening your next magical attack and making it an instant cast. You rotate both these 3 hit combos and magical attacks in sequence whilst using your defensive cooldowns and filler abilities appropriately until Fight or Flight comes off cooldown, and then the cycle begins once more. Paladin's invulnerability skill is Hallowed Ground, making it completely immune to damage for 10 seconds, showing the enemy the true meaning of a tank's strength. Warrior unleashes their primal rage to tear foes asunder, utilising their massive two-handed axe to keep all the attention of the enemy fully on them. You obtain this job from levelling Marauder, the starting tank class from Limsa Lominsa to level 30 and completing your class quests. Warrior uses the weight of their weapon to bring down fierce blows, shrugging off their damage taken with various self-healing abilities so that they can unleash more fell cleaves. With the unique defensive cooldown Vengeance, Warriors reduce their damage taken while simultaneously dealing damage to the enemy every time they get hit. Their capstone ability is Primal Rend, jumping in a flip to the enemy and delivering a massive direct critical hit. Warrior's Limit Break 3 is Land Waker, reducing damage taken by the party by 80% for 8 seconds. Warrior gameplay focuses on using your standard 3 button combo to build up a gauge and maintain your damage buff, then spending that gauge on Fell Cleave and Decimate to crush your foes. Every minute you can activate Inner Release, allowing your rage to take over and letting you use multiple Fell Cleaves back to back, finishing it all off with a Primal Rend. Warrior has the strongest self-healing of all the tanks, 
being able to top themselves and use nascent chaos to heal allies, making them a strong option as the de facto main tank. Warrior's invulnerability skill is called Holmgang, making it unable to drop below 1 HP for 10 seconds, easily shrugging off hit after hit without relenting. Dark Knight channels their inner darkness to augment their powers, effortlessly holding enemy aggression with their two-handed greatsword. You obtain this job from Ishgard after completing A Realm Reborn and entering the Heavensward expansion for the first time, which has a level 50 requirement. This is not a starting job, and begins at level 30. Dark Knights specialise in battering the opposition with myriad fast attacks, weaving, slicing and carving. They also possess unique magical mitigation and the ability to sacrifice their own mana pool to summon defensive shields in the Blackest Night. Their capstone abilities are Living Shadow, conjuring a simulcrum of their dark side to fight alongside them, and Shadowbringer, cleaving through enemies with a damaging wave of darkness. Dark Knight's LB3 is Dark Force, reducing damage taken by the party by 80% for 8 seconds. The job's gameplay style focuses on an extremely busy burst phase every 60 seconds, where you'll be constantly weaving attacks back to back and dealing so much damage that during those windows you can hold your own even against DPS jobs. In between these periods you'll use your blood weapon and regular 3 hit combos to build up gauge, which can then be spent on blood spiller attacks and fueling your living shadow. You'll also be managing your mana as it enables both your defensive and offensive actions to restore your essential dark side. Dark Knight's invulnerability skill is called Living Dead, making it so that when you die, you gain a 10 second inability to drop below 1 HP, and begin self healing with every hit during its duration. Before the 10 second timer runs off, you need to heal the quantity of your maximum HP, or you will die. Gunbreaker uses a one handed gun blade to fire etherically charged bullets into the blade. To enhance their cutting power and the force of their strikes, you obtain this job from Gridania after having a level 60 combat job already and owning the Shadowbringers expansion. This is not a starting job, and it begins at level 60. Gunbreaker uses cartridges to lay down gnashing fan combos and burst strike attacks, following them up with powerful continuation combos. They can also apply regenerations to themselves or teammates, as well as the powerful damage reduction and heal from Heart of Corundum. Their capstone ability is Double Down, an explosive AoE costing two cartridges to execute. Gunbreaker's LB3 is Gun Metal Soul, reducing damage taken by the party by 80% for 8 seconds. Gameplay with this job is often cited as feeling the most akin to traditional DPS rotations, with constant weaving and management of building your ammo, spending it and the continuation combos that result from them. You use your standard 3 button attacks to gain ammo, then spend ammo on heavy hitting combos and abilities. Using continuation alongside your myriad defensive cooldowns make Gunbreaker a fairly busy job on the whole, but it's absolutely satisfying to play correctly. Gunbreaker's invulnerability skill is called Super Bolide, instantly reducing your HP to 1, but making you immune to damage for the next 10 seconds. This video is sponsored by Castle, the mobile app that lets you make and post your own games, all on your phone, containing a simple yet powerful editor alongside tons of pre-existing templates to expedite the process of making your own games, as well as a simple, convenient sharing system that lets you try out other people's games as easily as you'd scroll to the next social media post. You can post your games, share ones that you found interesting with friends, comment and give feedback and even remix existing games. So to celebrate, I made my own game. You play as a very specific untitled bluebird, trying to make it through the extremely native pipes of not Limso Laminsa. It took me about 5 minutes to put together and while I know my artistic talents are not particularly stunning, I would love it if you gave it a go. You can download Castle today completely free on both Android and iOS, and if you download it you can use the link in the description to try out my game, or make one yourself.
If you do end up making a game, I would love for you to share it in my Discord server. We can try out one another's games, and it'll be a lot of fun, I hope. Thank you so much once more to Castle for sponsoring this video. Now let's move on to the next role. Healers have the responsibility of keeping the party alive and healthy. You'll be constantly supplying HP and mitigation to your allies, tank, and yourself and managing your mana to ensure that you don't run into an issue later down the road. Healers in FF14 are also expected to deal damage, but their damaging rotations themselves are generally very beginner friendly and basic to account for their extra responsibilities. There are currently four healers in the game, and they are split into two subcategories, pure healer and barrier healer. There are two pure healers focused on topping HP bars and able to freely use heal over time regeneration effects, and two barrier healers, more focused on shielding and preventative mitigation. All healers share gear, aside from weapon, and in a general full party composition you will have two healers. White Mage is a final fantasy staple at this point, and in FF14 our masters are wielding the magic to create curative and destructive spells alike using their two-handed staff as a medium. You obtain this job from leveling Conjurer, the starting healing class from Gridania, to level 30 in completing your class quests. White Mage is the king of the casted heal, able to throughput an immense amount of healing to deal with almost any challenge that faces them. They have various healing over time effects, a single target shield, and the ability to temporarily buff their own cast speed. White Mage's capstone abilities are Temperance, summoning wings which buff your heals and provide passive protection to your allies, and Liturgy of the Bell, placing a healing lily that will pulse heals as damage comes out, keeping HP bars high. White Mage's Limit Break 3 is Pulse of Life, reviving all fainted party members and fully restoring their HP and MP. Scholar is a master of battlefield tactics, using their codexes and summoned fairies to control the pace of the onslaught, protecting allies along the way. You obtain this job from leveling Arcanist, the starting DPS job from Limsa Lominsa, to level 30 and completing your class quests. At level 30, you obtain the ability to unlock both Scholar, a healer, and Summoner, a caster DPS. Scholar has the ability to cast both heals and shields on the party, as well as channel the flow of Aether around them to offer big healing and party mitigation effects. Their fairy also offers regeneration and mitigation, and can be manually positioned. They have access to a whole suite of tactics and stratagems which can be used to augment their abilities or buff the party's critical hit damage. Scholar's pinnacle skills are Summon Seraph, trading in Eos or Selene, their normal fairies, for Seraph, providing access to AoE fairy shielding in the form of Consolation. Alongside this, they have Expedience, allowing them to protect and increase the movement speed of the party for a period of time. Scholar's Limit Break 3 is Angel Wings, reviving all fainted party members and fully restoring their HP and MP. Astrologian is a master of astromancy and the divining arts. Using their Star Globe and Divining deck to great effect to heal and provide buffs to select members of the party. You obtain this job from Ishgard after completing A Realm Reborn and entering the Heavensward expansion for the first time, which has a level 50 requirement. This is not a starting job, and it begins at level 30. Astrologian is the most strategic of the four healers currently, with many abilities like Earthly Star that can be placed or set up and will increase in strength over time. As a pure healer, it excels in regeneration effects, but Astro also possesses the capability to shield effectively by using their cooldown Neutral Sect, making them a hybrid pure and barrier healer while it's active. Astrologians will constantly be drawing and playing cards while healing and damaging, playing them on allies to buff their party damage. Their pinnacle ability is Macro Cosmos, allowing them to compile all damage taken over a period of time, then detonate the cosmos for simultaneous damage and healing, based on how much damage has been tracked. Ast's Limit Break 3 is Astral Stasis, reviving all fainted party members and fully restoring their HP and MP. Sage uses Aether to manipulate four magical new liths in combat, using them as a medium to express their advanced curative knowledge. 
you obtain this job from Limsa Luminsa after having a level 70 combat job already and owning the Endwalker expansion. This is not a starting job and begins at level 70. Sages use you crazier to augment some of their offensive and healing actions, allowing them to turn their heals into shields and their filler damage into a damage over time ability. They also have access to Cardia, allowing them to select one ally as the recipient of passive healing every time the Sage does damage. Sage is excellent at shielding and mitigating whilst moving, and is the only healer with a gap closer in the form of Icarus. Sage's capstone abilities are Numa, a wide range blast of both healing and damage, hitting everyone within its wake, and Panheimer, offering multiple stacking shields that regenerate when broken to the party. Sage's Limit Break 3 is Technomaka, reviving all fainted party members and fully restoring their HP and MP. DPS stands for Damage Per Second, and that's their job. DPS are in charge of felling every foe that stands before them, being supported by the healing and mitigation from the tanks and DPS in the party. In FF14, DPS are also responsible for party mitigation responsibilities and using their self-healing or shielding whenever possible. FF14 DPS are split into three categories, melee DPS, physical range DPS, and caster DPS. We'll go through the melee first. Melee DPS all have positional requirements for certain attacks, needing to occasionally attack the flank and rear of their enemy, and they need to be up close and personal in order to deal damage. Dragoons are born amidst the timeless conflict between men and dragons. These lance-wielding knights have developed an aerial style of combat, that they might better pierce the scaled hides of their mortal foes. You obtain this job from leveling Lancer, the beginner DPS job from Gridania to level 30 and completing your class quests. Dragoons weave jump attacks between their regular onslaughts, channeling the blood of the dragon to unleash flashy and constant attacks. Dragoons Limit Break 3 is Dragon Song Dive, a crushing single target attack that deals high damage. Dragoon gameplay focuses around rotating two 5 hit extended combos in sequence weaving jumps in between and slowly building up dragon eyes through dives associated with these jumps to allow you to enter the life of the dragon. When their burst begins, they enter the life of the dragon, allowing them to flurry enemies with the powerful Nostrand attack multiple times, culminating their offense in a Star Diver jump. Dragoons can buff party critical hit rates and grant dragon sight to an ally periodically, increasing their damage. The Dragoon Capstone ability is a Wormwind Thrust, allowing the regular use of a powerful line AoE attack. Dragoon shares gear with Reaper, aside from weapon. Monk is an expert of hand-to-hand -hand combat, training their limbs to become the most mighty of weapons, honing the use of their equipped knuckles wisely. You obtain this job from leveling Pugilist, the starting DPS class from Uldar to level 30 and completing your class quests. Monks attack extremely quickly, shifting between the forms of three sacred animals for their primary attacks, Quirl, Oppo Oppo and Raptor. In their burst phase, they use combinations of these attacks under perfect balance to prepare a powerful blitz fueled by the power of your beast chakra. Monks Limit Break 3 is Final Heaven, a crushing single target attack that deals high damage. Monk is seen as one of the more complex melee DPS due to their extreme freedom and priority system focused gameplay. In executing your blitzes, you'll build solar and lunar naddies to eventually allow you access to even more powerful attacks, maintaining multiple buffs, procs, and damage over time effects all the while. Monk also possesses numerous self-defensive and party utility tools, such as Mantra, which increases the healing received by healing actions for the entire party for a period of time. Monk's strongest attack is Phantom Rush, a high-potency blitz using both the Lunar and Solar Nadi combined. Monk shares gear with Samurai, aside from the weapon. Ninja are able to manipulate the vital energies of the land, air, and living beings, manifesting their power through the weaving of Mudra, unleashing a wide array of attacks against their foes through this and the dual knives they wield. 
you obtain this job from leveling Rogue, the DPS class from Lim Silverminster to level 30 and completing your class quests. Please note you cannot start the game as Rogue, you must unlock it, requiring one level 10 combat job with class quests completed to that point before the guild will accept you. Ninjas excel at attacking from behind, using their stealth to incapacitate the enemy for themselves and the group using trick attack and mug. Ninjas limit breakthrough is Chimatsuri, a crushing single target attack that deals high damage. Their gameplay centers around using combinations of your mudra signs Ten, Chi and Jin to buff yourself or to debuff and damage your foes, then sweeping in with speedy nicks and slices via your weapons to deliver the finishing blow. Ninjas can also use one of their pinnacle abilities, Bunchin, to create a shadow clone that will attack alongside you. Their other are their Raijus, heavy lightning aspected attacks that act as a follow up to their offensive mudras. Ninja shares its accessories with ranged DPS. Samurai are those determined few holding fast to their convictions, hands by katana grips, awaiting the moment for their steel blades to sink. You obtain this job from Uldar after having a level 50 combat job already. This is not a starting job and begins at level 50. Samurai utilize Far Eastern swordplay techniques in the form of Ei Jutsu and the art of Sen and its three forces Setsu, Getsu and Ka. Your standard gameplay cycle focuses around building up one or multiple of these forces through combos, then releasing them via an Ei Jutsu for a powerful finisher strike with various effects. Samurai is a methodical melee DPS, able to deal a high amount of damage in a short space of time in the right hands, the weight of their blade made clear by the casted finisher attacks they strike with. Samurai's limit break 3 is Doom of the Living, a crushing single target attack that deals high damage. Their pinnacle attack is Ogi Namakuri, unleashing a cleave that strikes all foes two times back to back. Samurai shares gear with Monk, aside from weapon. Reaper uses the power of the void, binding themselves to a void sen ally to gain strength, using their two handed scythe to fell enemies to feed their newfound companion. You obtain this job from Uldar after having a level 70 combat job already and owning the Endwalker expansion. This is not a starting job and begins at level 70. Reaper is generally considered the easiest of the melee to play on the whole, making it a friendly entry point to the role or a good second job choice. Reaper's Limit Break 3 is the end, a crushing single target attack that deals high damage. Reaper gameplay revolves around managing two gauges, building them up through standard attacks. Firstly, a soul gauge, which can be spent on powerful scythe swipes, with follow up strikes by your void scent. Secondly, a shroud gauge, which when filled to a certain amount allows you to enshroud, offering your flesh as a vessel to your void scent avatar, unlocking a new sequence of attacks and abilities for a duration. Reaper's strongest ability is Communio, a casted finisher attack during their enshrouded form. Reaper shares gear with Dragoon, aside from weapon. Ranged DPS are up next, using their long ranged weapons to fell the opposition at distance, and utilizing their free movement to safely dodge incoming attacks with ease. Ranged DPS have a plethora of raid mitigation and utility in general, as a secondary function to their offensive abilities aiding the healers in keeping up with their demands. All ranged DPS share gear, aside from weapons and their right side accessories which are shared with Ninja. Bard specializes in songs that enchant their and their allies strength, wielding a bow with dead aim to defeat their foes. You obtain this job from leveling Archer, the starting DPS class from Gridania to level 30 and completing your class quests. This job coats the tip of their arrows with poisons and elementally aspected magic, adding bite to their barrage of attacks. Bard's Limit Break 3 is Sagittarius Arrow delivering a line shaped AoE, hitting all in its wake for huge damage. Rotating through their three primary songs, Wanderer's Minuet, Mage's Ballad and Army's Paean, each providing unique effects like speed buffs, cooldown reduction or bonus attacks. Bard is generally a proc based job, using a filler skill and reacting to the extra abilities that appear based on their song of choice. 
They can also supply cleanses, healing buffs, and mitigation to their teammates, making them a versatile pick in many situations. Bard's pinnacle ability is Radiant Finale, a party-wide damage buff that scales based on the number of songs you've played. Machinist uses the latest technologies to turn the tide of the battle, using their gun alongside a plethora of tools and inventions to cause destruction to their enemies. You obtain this job from Ishgard after completing A Realm Reborn and entering the Heavensward expansion for the first time, which has a level 50 requirement. This is not a starting job and begins at level 30. Machinists employ a full arsenal. Their weapon, automated turrets, auto crossbows, a flamethrower, their air anchor, the mighty automaton queen and more. Machinist Limit Break 3 is Satellite Beam, delivering a line-shaped attack hitting all in its wake for huge damage. Machinist uses their standard attacks and tools to build up two gauges, a battery gauge which allows the use of turrets and the automaton queen, and the heat gauge which enables their gun to hypercharge, shooting rapid heat blasts and reducing the cooldowns on some of their commonly used abilities. The crux of Machinist gameplay focuses on managing these gauges, alongside utilising their tools as often as possible, dismantling the opposition along the way to aid in protecting teammates. Machinist's final weapon skill is Chainsaw, a line attack that completes their kit. Dancer have learned how to land throwing weapons with the exact same precision as their footfalls, removing any who would obstruct the endless beat of the dance. You obtain this job from Limsa Laminsa after having a level 60 combat job already. This is not a starting job and begins at level 60. Dancers are able to select one teammate of choice at a time to be their dance partner via closed position, allowing them to partake in the flow of their steps and receive persistent buffs as a result. Dancers Limit Break 3 is Crimson Lotus, delivering a line-shaped attack hitting all in its wake for huge damage. Dancers regularly use standard step and more rarely technical step, using their four step actions, Emboit, Entrechant, Jeet and Pirouette to deal massive AoE hits and buff the party. In between these, they hurl their chakrams in such a way that they return to sender, allowing them to alternate these ranged attacks with fan dances to overwhelm any foe. Dancers can also provide AoE heals and mitigation to their allies. Their max level skill is Starfall Dance, delivering a critical direct hit to all enemies in a straight line ahead of them. Casters are the last combat role in Final Fantasy XIV, masters of the magical arts that deal death and destruction. Casters mostly attack from range and are generally expected to be careful and precise with their actions due to the slow cadence of their magic. Some casters are capable of raising like healers, and all have the ability to reduce the attack and magic attack of enemies. Black mages are agents of devastation, capable of annihilating those who oppose them through little more than the force of their will, wielding a magical rod. You obtain this job from leveling Thaumaturge, the starting DPS class from Uldar, to level 30 and completing your class quests. Black mages FF14's glass cannon trading the ability to easily move or any kind of raid utility in favour of pure, unadulterated damage with every cast. A slow, meticulous attacker with endless complexity the deeper you delve. Black Mage's Limit Break 3 is Meteor, delivering a circular shaped attack hitting all within for high damage. Black Mage's cycle between two stances, Astral Fire, in which they liberally sacrifice their mana to allow the use of high damage fire based magic, and Umbral Ice, in which their blizzard based spells allow them to quickly regain their mana pool back. The gameplay loop of the job relies around maximizing casts of fire and their finisher despair, whilst carefully placing their spell speed increasing ley lines and positioning to avoid unnecessary movement. Their pinnacle ability is Paradox able to be used within both Astral Fire and Umbral Ice to deal damage and additional effects depending on your current stance. In times immemorial, there lived mages who not only had the power to summon the primals, but also the means to transmute the primals' essences, thus binding them to their will. Known simply as summoners, the existence of these men and women and their arcane art have been all but lost to the ages. 
summoners use their tomes to wield the strength of the primal Eggies, using their carbuncle pets as a medium. You obtain this job from leveling Arcanist, the starting DPS class from Limsa Luminsa, to level 30 and completing your class quests. At level 30, you obtain the ability to unlock both Scholar, a healer, and Summoner, a caster DPS. Summoner's Limit Break 3 is Terra Flare, delivering a circular shaped attack, hitting all within for high damage. Summoner commands the power of the Primals Ifrit, Titan, and Garuda, as well as the Elder Primals Bahamut and Phoenix, alternating their signature attacks for a short period of time before moving on to the next. Each Primal offers unique abilities and gameplay styles, and you'll plan your summon order around the constraints of each encounter. Summoner is seen as a very beginner-friendly job, with relatively free movement, high damage, raid mitigation, and damage buffs, as well as the ability to put personal shields on themselves, with a very simple core rotation. At max level, summoners further buff their Ifrit, Titan, and Garuda, unleashing Inferno, Aerial Blast, and Earth and Fury upon calling on them. Red Mages are students of both destructive black magic and curative white magic, constantly balancing these two schools with their rapier and magical focus. You obtain this job from Uldar after having a level 50 combat job already. This is not a starting job and begins at level 50. This caster is unique in that they not only utilize magical long range attacks, but close ranged physical flurries on occasion as well. Red Mage's Limit Break 3 is Vermilion Scourge, delivering a circular shaped attack hitting all within for massive damage. Red Mage's unique trait is their ability to dual cast. After they cast a spell, they will gain a dual cast, making the next one instantly cast. Using their dual casts to deftly avoid telegraphed attacks, they build both their black and white mana gauges, working around their various procs to keep both equal at all times. Then once they've accrued enough mana, they unleash it, enchanting their melee attacks with imbued power into a combo, before using multiple finishes, one after another terminating in resolution, their pinnacle ability. Red Mages are unique in their ability to rapidly resurrect multiple allies thanks to dual cast. So those are all 19 standard combat jobs in the game, as well as their flavor and the core of their gameplay loop, and a good look at some of the visuals that should help you lean towards your preference naturally. But what's my recommendation? Firstly, if none of the jobs had spoken to me enough yet by filling the look cooler meter alone, I'd pick a role rather than a job. Would you prefer to be a tank, a healer, or a DPS? Which one sparks the most joy for you? This narrows down your choices exponentially. Then if it's your first job, honestly, I'd go with one of the more beginner options and build up from there, because you're not only capable, but encouraged to level multiple jobs. I don't see job choice being some be all and end all decision. You can change without major investment whatsoever, aside from a little time catching them up level wise. If you want to pick a tank, you're generally going to go with Paladin or Warrior, and personally, I kind of prefer Warrior as an entry choice because it gives you a really good understanding of gauge building and spending, which is essential to a lot of FF14's jobs. It's pretty simple to learn, it's strong, and it's cool. If you want to heal, you make the decision between pure healing and barrier healing, and go with White Mage or Scholar from there. It's important to note that the only healer you can play from level 1 is Conjurer, which becomes White Mage, because Scholar only becomes available as an offshoot at level 30, making White Mage the de facto easy beginner's choice. For melee DPS, each one plays slightly different and I think it's really a stylistic choice, but out of the two starting options of Dragoon and Monk, I think Dragoon is the easier to understand and learn moderately well. For ranged, well, you can only start with Bard, so your choice is kind of made without any input from me whatsoever. And lastly, when it comes to Caster, I personally would choose Summoner over Black Mage as a first job. Black Mage is fantastic and is one of my favorite jobs in the game, but is somewhat janky at low level and isn't exactly beginner friendly to play well. On top of the fact that Summoner gets a bonus scholar for leveling, increasing your gameplay options quickly and early. But honestly, just play a bit of everything, whatever takes your fancy, and main what you enjoy the most after actually trying them, 
If you're new to the game and you watch this video, I'd love to know what job you end up starting with. Let me know in the comments if you do, I would really appreciate it. I have a series of guides releasing for every job which will take you from level 1 to level 90 and teach you to play at your peak in even the hardest content too. So please check those out as they release if you have the interest. Thank you so much for watching and have a fantastic rest of your day.